Hi, thanks very much for tuning in. This video is all about British Indian restaurant food and how successful it's been in the UK. So we have a curry house absolutely everywhere in the UK from small villages and obviously hundreds of them in the bigger cities. So it's a very popular food with a very efficient system and it's created a lot of nostalgia and really struck a chord with the English palate. So I think all of us in the UK were introduced to curry at a young age and we often have fond memories of going to certain restaurants, certain dishes and certain times of our lives that we remember fondly. And as a result of those elements, I think a lot of us have wanted to recreate or try to recreate the food that we're eating in these restaurants at home. And that can be a little bit difficult. Let's give an overview of um, the ingredients and um, what goes into making a curry. So most menus have at least 50 curries on the menus. So it's a colossal task for the chef who's not only a good cook, but he's got to be very skillful, just the same as they are in other restaurants when they've got Friday and Saturday night, 200 orders coming in, often six pans all at once. They've got to remember what's gone in, what hasn't gone in, how long each one's been cooked for. They've got to have um, a mind map or a mental picture of every single dish and the subtle differences because most of them use base gravy, but you want them all to try to taste different and you want to get the customer uh, satisfaction by fulfilling their order which must be a colossal task. So, you know, consistency for the chef's really important. It's not all about cooking, but it's, you know, creating the sus subtle variations to knock up a curry in five minutes that's going to please the customer. And then we've got all the pre-cooked ingredients, which is a colossal amount of preparation for any restaurant. You've got pre-cooked chicken, which has got, you know, all the spices, the oil, the bay leaves, the sometimes base gravy or sometimes uh, pre-cooked chicken is done in the tandoor which has its own ticker sauce for that specific menu and it's very much the same with lamb which has a longer cooking process has multiple flavors added to it so all these pre-cooked components all add to the taste and all add to the layers of flavor then you've got your vegetables your potato your mixed veg you know, your, your flavours in that, the salt, the little bit of oil, the bay leaves, the black seed, whatever. And then you've got the tomato sauce with subtle spicing, colouring, watered down perfectly. Onions, very important. They've all been pre-cooked. Spices, salt, bay leaf, oil. Then you've got your peppers and onions, often several different types in each restaurant for different dishes. Then really importantly, you've got your base gravy, which probably has at least 15 ingredients plus the spices. And then you've got your mixed powder, which could be five to eight different spices. Then you've put curry powder in the mixed powder, which often has seven different spices in. So you've got 15 different spices in your mixed powder. You know, putting a little bit of oil in your ginger and garlic to stop it going green because that's what happens when it oxygenizes, oxygenizes, etc, etc. Then you've got your fresh ingredients, you know, uh, things you don't have to pre-cook, you know, extra turmeric, the pickles, the chilies, fresh onion, fresh peppers, cream, coriander, salt, coconut, sugar, almonds. Then you need more oil, whether you're using seasoned oil or plain oil and, you know, even a simple chicken curry could have at least 30 ingredients in it and many of them overlapping which is really interesting and that's just one curry so i think you've also got the rice the biryanis the nans the sides the starters etc which is a colossal task for every restaurant so it's all in the planning so all these flavors combine layers of of depth that is really hard to create at home because the heat of the kitchen as well adds to the flavour of those ingredients. Everything's stored away in a fridge overnight. But the heat of those ingredients when they're pre-cooked also adds to some flavour. So I don't believe there's any um, secrets or key ingredients that 
we don't know about. I think it's really all in the preparation. And just what I've mentioned, it's a colossal task. So this is what makes this uh, system highly efficient, uniquely British, you know, serving the English palate. It's a very standardised um, menu that many Indian restaurants offer. Obviously, each restaurant has its specialities as well. And, you know, you combine all what I've mentioned. It's a very efficient and successful process and it really delivers doesn't it there's there's some difference between a, a poor curry and a really great curry but most of them are pretty good and would be hard to make at home just for the reasons that i've uh, outlined previously then you've got your shopping you know each restaurant has to do the shopping whether they're indian or not the shopping the storage the cooking the preparation the pre-cooking and then the cooking of the actual curries so not only is it a highly sophisticated system, but in one curry, it could pack eight to ten hours of work into one curry. So you do get value for money, don't you? So next time you're thinking about your British Indian restaurant, food at home, think about pre-cooking everything first. You can use your freezer, you know, you can thaw things out, you can store things for months. But there's a lot of work that goes into it and it's the layers of flavours, the overlapping of ingredients that really works in unison with each other and creates what we know as British Indian restaurant food.